Hey, I'm a bit sad to report that Furiosa was fine. Which is so unfortunate because I love Furiosa as a character. I really liked Fury Road. I think Fury Road is my favorite action movie in the last decade or so. It's definitely up there. I mean, this prequel, Furiosa, isn't bad, of course. There's a lot of that same gasoline guzzling mayhem. You know, a lot of it is on par with what we saw in the 2015 movie. Though I feel like it's a tad less impressive this time around. And I think it's mostly because at 2 hours and 30 minutes, it just gets too fatiguing by the end. At 2 hours, Fury Road had a tighter script. It was a lot more focused. This one takes place over like 15 years as we see furiosa coming of age yeah anya taylor joy does a great job i think she's a great furiosa but maybe she deserved a better villain to go against chris hemsworth as lord dementis actually started off pretty well i was actually kind of into his performance he wasn't as self-serious and actually provided a little bit of contrast from the other grittier characters in the in the story but as the story progressed i just stopped caring less and less about his character and I guess it was intentional for him not to be too threatening, especially because he doesn't show up in the sequel, of course. But then you still have a Morton Joe in the backdrop, but I feel like they could have just maybe more leaned towards him as, as the main antagonist. But if you're here for the vehicular action, then you're going to get plenty of it, and you'll probably have a good time. It's definitely some of the best action you'll see this year that actually feels, you know, real and not like CGI based. Although they definitely use CGI here, here and there to augment the, the practical stuff. This scene in particular, I think, is actually the best in the movie. But again, I feel like it just gets a little bit too repetitive by the end. And I'm not sure anything lives up to the grandness, the epicness of some of the key scenes from Fear Row. Like the ones with the big envoy of warlords with that one dude playing that electric guitar. Or the sandstorm sequence. That said, I do think this movie starts really strong with some more subdued action during Furiosa's childhood. And all the wasteland tech and machinery is fun to watch and, and really well conceived. Maybe that's a little better than what we saw in Fury Road. This is some of the best stuff here. While they're trying to fix this war truck at high speeds, while they're being attacked from all sides. Yeah, again, Anya's really good in this movie. I particularly felt invested in her story in the beginning of the movie. But again, as it went on, it just felt like the story became a little bit more too simplistic, just a simple revenge story. It felt like it was lacking the motivation and ambition of Fury Road. I wanted to see her interact with the sex slaves more and find some connections with them. You know, really explore her relationship with them and delve deeper into the feminist themes that were present in Fury Road. But I felt like all those themes are more of a backdrop in this movie. and just relied too much on the cars and motorcycles and sand and in the violence of the wasteland at the expense i think of a lot of these characters they even introduce a character that's like an ally to furiosa you know filling in the role for mad max since he is it in this film i think he does have like a minor cameo in the background but they put him in there to give furiosa a type of teacher or someone to learn from but he mostly played out like a hollow replacement for mad max i guess to give a bone to those who want a manly figure to root for a roguish mad max type as if Furiosa or even her mother here isn't enough. I don't know, I think it detracted from the story. And just overall, Fury Road has more memorable characters. From Nicholas Holt's War Boy to Mad Max himself. And even the wives that were rescuing had more screen time and character. You know, for the first half, I was really into Furiosa, thinking it was just as good as Fury Road or better. But again, Fury Road was just a lot more focused. This one just overstayed its welcome. It almost felt like two movies combined together. Which maybe could have worked better as a TV series or something. I think George Miller said they're going to go back to Mad Max himself for the next one. But maybe we're better off pivoting to an older Furiosa, Charlize Theron's character, maybe post Fury Road. But yeah, this movie very much invites the comparison to Fury Road. It is a prequel. And then as the credits start, it directly leads into a montage of the Fury Road. Of Charlize Theron like, rescuing the, the women. And at that point, I was definitely thinking, oh, I actually would rather just watch Free Road again. <laughs> I kind of want to go watch that right now. Oh, and it's okay if you didn't see the this little after credit stinger. There's like, it's just a few seconds of a, of a little Easter egg for, for Free Road fans. It's not really necessary, by the way. So maybe I'm sounding a bit too harsh. 
So really, it's not a bad time at the theaters. If you can stand two hours and 30 minutes of nonstop room, room. And I actually suggest most people to, to wait for the home release so you can take it in at your own pace. Especially if you have a good TV and sound system. Yuriosa, eh Yuriosa. That's Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I gotta go though. I'll see you next time. Under the moonlight. Bye bye.